Setting attainable financial goals is often a hot topic this time of year. Have you ever heard of goal-based investing? Our great friend of the show, financial advisor J.B. Bryant, is here with us with what you need to know. Happy New Year, special lady. Oh, thank you so much, special man. And I'll tell you, this topic is right on time. I mean, it goal-based investing at a time of year where everybody's setting financial goals. This is a time to think about how are you choosing your investing and what is the basis of your investment decisions. And I think goal-based investing, Bill, makes us be more, more holistic, <laughs> use that popular word now, about how we we approach investing. All right, Think so, JB, yeah. I'm, I'm a little confused here because uh, we're talking traditional investing and goal-based investing. I thought all investing was goal-based. Isn't it? Yes. You're, you're, isn't all investing trying to reach a goal? No. Typically, it's about, <laughs> no. make, making, it's about making more money. Don't you, when you think about your investment account, the first thing you think about is how much money did I make? But it's to get you know, to a goal to get something, right? <laughs> but when, but truly with goal-based investing, you'll start thinking, I need this money for retirement and I want to retire. Say a person wants to retire within a year. Yeah. Then they shouldn't be thinking a lot about return. They should be thinking more about this is, I need this money to be here <laughs> one year from now. Okay. So they're thinking about their life goal versus I have to make the biggest return off this particular account. Okay. All right. I see, I see the difference now. So, mm. okay. So there is a difference. Mm. And, and obviously how, you, how you're, we you're, approach. you're schooling me again. So here we go. All right. <laughs> so what are the key benefits uh, to the investor uh, of goal-based investing? You know, I, I think that a key benefit there is that it forces you to think about what are your specific needs, what are your specific goals for that particular pot of money. So you may have a pot of money for your grandchildren that are going to go to college in 15 years that may be aggressive. And you may have a pot of money that is for... Um, uh, say you want to purchase um, a home and you want to actually buy the entire home within the next year. Well, that you might have to invest more conservatively because you want to know the exact amount of money you have to purchase that home with within this short period of time. So the more, long, the more time you have, of course, the more relatively aggressive you may be with that particular account because it's for 15, 20 years down the road. So the goal-based investing kind of reframes what you see as financial success. Okay. So, and then, and then that leads us to the next question is, we are the result of the decisions that we've made through mm. life, and the mm. investing is the same, isn't it? It is. And an advantage, I would say, to goal-based investing is that it helps you keep your commitment to your life's financial goals. Now, because you're making huge financial sacrifices in order to save for something down the road and maybe around the corner or way down the road. But that financial sacrifice, if you participate in the decision, if you visualize what I want this for, I think it increases your commitment and then also goal-based investing will, in, will reduce your likelihood of you being impulsive. Like, oh, um, you know that this is for your retirement 20 years from today. So if the market has a dramatic short-term drop, you may be more reluctant to just sell everything that you have from short-term changes because you know that your that particular bucket of money is for my long-term financial goals. So, so it helps to be yeah, more Goal-based goal investing is something that really has uh, become popular, say, in the last several years. And, and that's uh, obviously, I'm thinking maybe that has something to do with you and people in your profession that that's have kind right. of been teaching us to kind of refocus the way we think about our investments. Well, there were so many millions of people that were hit in 2008, 2009, you remember, now that's called the Great Recession. Mm 
So you have all of these stock market investors that were about to retire the next year, and they had no idea that the market was about to take that huge turn. So the investors that were chasing returns back in the 08 and the 09, all of a sudden saw these negative <laughs> changes in their net worth and in their long-term money, that, that the money that they have been saving for a long-term shifted immediately, just like that. So with that, they said, what should I have done differently? And especially as a wealth manager, you think, how could I have helped them prevent that from happening? And I think that that forced a movement in our industry to say, let's get investors to, to think more about what's important to them, why they're investing, instead of, okay, I got to make the most. Okay, I've got to make sure that I'm getting the maximum return. When indeed, sometimes it's, I want to make sure I get my money back. <laughs> I want to make sure, not return on, right? But return of. <laughs> they want their money. So, we some we have we really learned the hard way from that great recession that we need to stay focused on your specific financial goals for your money not what's making headlines not what looks like it's going to pay you the biggest return but what do i need, how do i need to invest according to my personality so that i can reach my goals and sleep well at night all right thank you jb brian <laughs> Always Thank great, you. great stuff. And by the way, JB offers free weekly money seminars and webinars every Wednesday evening and Sunday morning. You'll find a link to more information at WTBR.com slash VTM. Stay tuned. We will be right back.